Round of applause. Let's talk about where the is. talk to you about alien life and about the evidence for it. So there have been many, many claims of seeing aliens. So I want to read you a couple classic examples. In 1961, Benny and Barty Hill were driving home from vacation when they saw a bright point of light in the sky. A huge craft descended and a number of humanoid figures peered at them from the craft's windows. Another, cl another classic story is in 1947, pilot Kenneth Arnold was flying in Washington when he observed a series of bright flashes. Soon, circular flying objects pass in front of this plane, their motion resembling saucers skipping on water. This is actually where the word flying saucer comes from, from this description. So, many people write these stories off as, you know, just total bullshit, but in fact, a large percentage of the population believes in this. So, a 2005 Gallup poll uh, concluded that about one in four Americans believe that extraterrestrial beings have visited Earth at some time in the past. A CNN poll from 1997 says that 64% of people said that aliens have contacted humans. So, the first type of evidence I'm going to talk to you about today is UFO photographs. So this is a, a grid of, these are zoomed in UFO photographs just showing the UFO. Now I should point out, UFO means unidentified flying object. It doesn't mean alien craft. So all that means is we have no idea what the hell these things are. <laughs> yeah, so you'll notice that many of them do look sort of frisbee shaped or like a hat maybe. Um, but it's not clear how we can explain all of these photographs. I mean, are, are, is everyone just making this shit up? Yes. Okay, so I want to show you a few things. First of all, look, notice the photographs on the left here. These are alleged alien craft. And the photos on the right are blimps. <laughs> if you're really perceptive, you might notice some similarities there. Um, second of all, these are photograph this is a photograph of paratroopers dropping out of military planes. And what you'll notice here is that if you saw one of these things in the distance, you probably have no idea what that was. And in fact, some of these things look like some of the alien photographs. So, and, and also, parachutes can move around quite erratically because of wind currents. So this could be another possible explanation. Um, another thing to observe is that <laughs> backlighting can create some very weird effects. So if you're taking a photograph into the sun, the, all the details of your photograph will be washed out, and you'll basically just get a black silhouette. And you'll notice, actually, many UFO photographs have that feature. that there, There's very little detail, and they look very washed out. So it turns out this thing over here is just some crazy asshole strapped a bunch of balloons on <laughs> You also have to take into account uh, ex strange and experimental aircraft. I mean, if I saw some of these things, I would be pretty freaked out. Like this one, were they trying to design something that looked like an alien craft? <laughs> we also have to consider classified government projects. I mean, these things by their very nature, nobody knows about. So if you saw one of these crafts, I mean, you might think that it was something from out of this world, but it could just be some waste of government money. <laughs> also, custom designed balloons can, can look very, very strange. I challenge you guys to tell me, which of these is a balloon and which of these is an alleged alien craft? Oh, right. So the, the right one is the balloon. This is actually the balloon that that boy claimed to be trapped in. <laughs> Another interesting explanation for some of these things. So on the left, these things are called sun dogs. A lot of uh, UFO encounters, people see, claim to see lights, and these are pretty weird looking, but this is actually caused by crystals in the atmosphere, ice crystals. We also have lenticular clouds here on the right. I mean, in a gray, blurry, grainy photograph, that could look like some huge spacecraft or something. Now, okay, so we, we have explanations for many of these UFO photographs, but what about shit like this? I mean, look at this thing. Uh, I mean, with almost all the UFO photographs, they're grainy, they're blurry, it's really hard to make out details. But then we have things like this. This is really clear. It's pretty clearly not a balloon, right? So it turns out that that, that was an entry in a UFO making competition online. 
it's pretty remarkable. You can, there's almost nothing you can't do with Adobe Photoshop these days. <laughs> Did you know that Hillary Clinton and the time that Latin and Kevin Harvest go together? And this is, the, this is the classic painting of Vin Diesel. Alright, so Photoshop might explain some of these photographs, but what about these ones? I mean, this is from 1967. This is long before the first personal computer. And I mean, this thing, it's pretty clearly not, some, not a crap that we can identify. So what can we say about that? Well, it turns out that photo manipulation has a long history. This was done in 1860, putting Abraham Lincoln's head on John Calhoun's body. That was before the first typewriter was sold. There are also more creative methods. Look at this photograph on the left. This is an alleged alien crap. The photograph on the right is a hubcap thrown by professional skeptic Michael Sherman. <laughs> Alright, so basically what we see is that it's very, very difficult for a given photograph to eliminate all possible explanations for it uh, besides the aliens. I mean, it could be photographic manipulation, it could be an ordinary craft at an odd angle, um, it could be dust or defects or particles on your camera lens, or optical effects. Um, it's basically, UFO photographs just don't give us very good evidence. Alright, so the second type of evidence I want to talk to you about is crop circles. So in the late 1970s, farmers in England began noticing a very strange phenomenon. Uh, they, would, they would see these strange patterns in their crops. At, at first, nobody knew how to explain this. They proposed all kinds of things like cyclonic wind action, some kind of uh, wind phenomenon, or even strange animal mating behaviors. But over time, these things grew more complex, and people uh, stopped coming up with these natural explanations. So these were two. One was done in 1990, another in 1991. This doesn't look like any wind to me. So it turns out um, things got even stranger when people realized some of these crop circles contain these tiny iron spheres, almost perfectly spherical. And I mean really tiny, we're talking about 20, 20 micron spheres. I mean, how the hell could we possibly explain this? Well, I have the answer for you. I, I can actually show you how uh, crop circles are made. Nobody had bothered inspecting the ground that hard before. 